What's up there, good people of the world? It is your Amigo in Vehicles, the Big Heavy, and I'm sitting in my Ford F-150 once again. I want to talk to you today about my biggest frustration and disappointment so far with the F-150. And I'm not going to pull the usual YouTuber trick where I spend 35 minutes prattling on before I actually get to the point. I'll give you the bottom line up front, and then I'm going to go into maybe a little inside baseball in the auto industry, why I think this is potentially kind of a big problem for Ford. And if you're into that kind of stuff, hopefully you'll love it. If not, then you know you can kind of take my uh, my complaint, file it in, uh, in your memory banks if you're thinking about an F-150 or some of the other newer Ford vehicles. I'll give you some uh, some advice on how to how to think about that going forward. So my big complaint is with the over-the-air updates. And this was a pretty big deal when Ford announced the F-150 and announced the Mach-E. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it's kind of confusing because we've, as consumers, sort of come to expect our products to get regular updates. If you've got an iPhone, if you've got an Android, you know, kind of any modern device, whether it's your, you know, potentially even your coffee maker to your, you know, DVD player to your game system to your smartphone, all those things, they regularly get software updates. Sometimes that's annoying. You turn the thing on in the morning, you've got to, you know, check your calendar to figure out where you need to go for work or whatnot and your device wants to update itself and you've got to sit there for you know 10 minutes while it does its thing and hopefully ultimately comes back on, appears normal, everything's kind of where you expect it to be and you're able to get on with your life. And most vehicle makers weren't able to do that. For you know some of them, they were able to update limited pieces of the vehicle. So maybe you could get a software update for the, you know, the navigation system or the radio. Um, you know, maybe that was something you could install yourself as a consumer, or maybe that was something where, you know, at least with navigation systems, commonly you could get a disc or a USB stick or something that you could insert into the system, do the update that way, and essentially you could update a portion of your vehicle without having to go to the dealership. What's a big deal about full over-the-air updates, which is a capability that Ford announced, there's, you know, very few other automakers, probably Tesla is kind of the, the headliner that's had mass adoption and mass deployment of over-the-air updates. The big deal is there is you can send new software to the vehicle without having to go to a dealership, and it can update all of the systems in the vehicle. So if you're not aware, you know, a car has dozens of computers, each of them control various functions, they're all interconnected. In most cases, they're made potentially by a whole variety of different manufacturers. So it's a little bit more complicated maybe than updating a smartphone to update a vehicle. This was, uh, was kind of a big deal when Tesla pulled it off and, you know, pretty big deal when Ford announced that they were pretty much the first big car maker to go and pull this off. That was all fine and dandy, all sorts of, you know, accolades from the press, you know, hooray Ford. They, uh, they put out a, a, a bunch of announcements. So the big piece of that announcement that's potentially relevant for you and was relevant for me as somebody considering purchasing an F-150 is the major initial over-the-air update that they promised was something called Blue Cruise. Blue Cruise is essentially Ford's, you know, quasi self-driving feature. Yes, I understand self-driving is technically not the right term for it. It's assisted driving, but the punchline is it's a feature that allows you to drive down a good portion of major United States and I believe Canadian highways without your hands on the wheel. So you've got cameras, you've got all sorts of funky stuff in the car that makes sure you're paying attention, but you can take your hands off the wheel, which is nice if you're going on a long drive. It's, you know, kind of cool. You've probably seen, you know, YouTube videos on Teslas with people, you know, rolling down and doing foolish things like climbing out of the driver's seat while the car kind of pilots itself. And Ford has announced this functionality. It's actually rolling out in current vehicles. You know, if you went today and bought a new straight off the factory line F-150, it would have this Blue Cruise functionality built in. And they promised to early buyers like myself and potentially some of you out there that Blue Cruise would come in a software update in Q3 of 2021. By my math, Q3 has come and gone. And most recently, the Ford CEO, Jim Farley, announced that they were delaying the over-the-air update of Blue Cruise to the first quarter of 2022. And as a typical CEO does, you know, he had some caveats and made it sound nice, like he was doing something that was going to be good for consumers and how it was, you know, to do some final testing and make sure they had the, the revenue models ironed out and all that stuff. But my suspicion is that that's frankly BS. My suspicion is that they haven't figured out how to do over-the-air updates successfully. 
If you're somebody that just wants the punchline, that's the punchline. My frustration is the over-the-air updates aren't quite working yet, as manifested by Blue Cruise not coming out in Q3 as promised. Announced as coming out in Q1 of next year, which is 2022. And then there's some rumblings that potentially it's second half of 2022, so already that deadline might be slipping. Factor that into your buying decisions. Again, if you're buying something straight out of the factory, you'll get it. If you're buying a 2022 model year F-150 or Ford Mach-E, you should be okay. But if you're in the used market, if you're on the waiting list, it's uh, potentially something you might pay for hardware-wise, but not get the software for, so you can actually use the feature, which is, is the boat I find myself in. And also potentially a, a question mark, even if you do have one of those newer vehicles, on whether Ford can do other over-the-air updates successfully. And that's my primary worry. So let's get into a little inside baseball on the auto industry. And as a disclaimer, I've worked for various manufacturers in the auto industry. I'm not working for any right now. Everything I'm going to tell you is complete and utter speculation on my part. You know, you could call it uh, reasonably informed speculation, I guess. But, you know, I'm not sharing anything that I've picked up at any of these companies. I haven't worked on any of the products I'm going to talk about. You know, I generally don't touch the, uh, the kind of core product space when I work with these companies. So I'm not doing anything related to vehicle development. So the first thing to under that's worth understanding about the auto industry is a lot of people go into a Ford dealership and, you know, or a Nissan dealership, whoever, and they think I'm buying a vehicle from the company that manufactured the, the car. That's actually not the case. Dealers are generally independently owned, except for the case of Tesla and some of these new automotive startups. And it's popular now to kind of poo-poo that model. If you hang out on any kind of Tesla forums or if you, you know, watch YouTube videos of Tesla folks, They'll talk about dealerships and they'll talk about how, you know, I wish all the dealerships would go away and Elon saving us from ourselves by eliminating the, the franchise dealership model, which is that model where an independent entity owns the, the car dealership. You know, like anything, there's, there's good and bad to this model. I think what's uh, the, the reason franchise dealerships came into existence was if you imagine a world where all the dealerships, you know, let's say all the Ford dealerships were owned by Ford Motor Company and my local dealership suddenly decided to start charging $500 for an oil change if I didn't like it, you know, too bad, so sad if all the dealerships are owned by Ford Motor Company and they all charge $500 for an oil change. You see that a little bit with Tesla folks in that there's rampant complaining about the quality of most of the service centers and you can't really go down the street to, you know, you can't go from Joe's Tesla to Mary's Tesla because Tesla Motor Company owns every single dealership sets all the policies, sets all the pricing, and, you know, it's kind of potentially up to maybe the local manager to make a, a service center good or bad, but the policies are set company-wide. Versus the franchise model with Ford, Chevy, Nissan, whoever, if, you know, Joe's uh, Nissan dealership isn't delivering very good service, Mary's Nissan dealership that's down the road may be able to provide superior service, they, they're free to set their own pricing, they're free to set their own policies, so... As a consumer, I have some choice. I'm potentially able to get better service. I'm potentially able to get better pricing since the dealership can ultimately set the price of the vehicles. So again, like anything in life, kind of pros and cons to the franchise model. The reason I bring that up is because historically, you know, for the past hundred years, the major auto manufacturers, you as the consumer weren't really the, the person they cared about. They cared about manufacturing and producing vehicles and they cared about selling those to a dealer and ultimately supplying some parts to that dealer so they could have a revenue stream of servicing your vehicle. You know, they were worried about Mary's dealership versus, you know, the big heavy, the guy or, or gal buying one of their vehicles. The reason that's important is because, again, for, you know, literally 100 years, the business model of these auto manufacturers was producing a product, pushing it out the door, and never worrying about it again. You know, maybe they'd, they'd have to do recalls, you know, there were some limited circumstances, but when they produced a vehicle, for all intents and purposes, it was, you know, end of story, put a period on that sentence, that thing's gone. Tesla kind of goofed that whole model up by keeping the hardware more or less static. And when I say hardware, I'm talking about the vehicle. If you look at a Tesla Model S, it's largely unchanged since it came out. You know, they've done some styling updates They've tweaked components of the vehicle, but you know they don't have the three to five year refresh cycle that most of the big manufacturers have. Where Tesla got around that and differentiated themselves is by sending out software updates. 
So theoretically, you buy a Tesla vehicle over the course of its life, it gets a few updates, it you know, theoretically gets better within the con confines of the hardware that, that was built into the car. And in a lot of cases, we've, we've seen that. We've seen that if you're unfamiliar, Tesla's you know, improved its, uh, its assisted driving. You know, they've added goofy little features, everything from fart sounds to the ability to uh, watch Netflix videos while you're, while you're parked. So there is a compelling argument to say that Tesla products do improve over time without having to buy new stuff or without having to go buy a new model year vehicle. You know, I think the automakers, and again, this is is the big heavy speculation, not not anything that I've heard stated. They, you know, initially looked at Tesla as kind of this goofy upstart, didn't really, you know, frankly care much or, or think they would do much. And then the last couple or three years, they started getting scared. You know, when Teslas became the number one selling vehicles in the compact car segment, when they started eating into SUVs, when they released a full-size SUV, which was kind of a bread and butter product for most, uh, at least in the US and Canada, most of the car manufacturers, these guys got worried. And they were like, how am I gonna compete? Well, one of the ways they're gonna compete, theoretically, is by taking that same page from the Tesla playbook and selling you a product that theoretically gets better as time goes on. And that is why there was, there was so much hype about the OTA or over the air update capability with the new Ford vehicles. And it was kind of funny because I think they, you know, they hyped that up to a lot of their automotive journalists and you saw it in every press release talking about the new F-150, talking about the Mach-E, but no one really explained why that was so important. But you know, that's, that kind of gets them parity with Tesla on one hand. And then the thing that they don't put in the press releases and the thing they're, they're not really hyping up as much is it gives them a recurring revenue stream. So if you sign up for Blue Cruise, I think you get three years free and then you gotta pay, I can't remember if it's 300 bucks or 600 bucks for another three year boost. Now they kind of get some, some additional money out of you and they get money on a recurring monthly basis as long as you have the car versus that, you know, we sold you the vehicle or we sold the vehicle to the dealership, the dealership then sold it to you and that transaction is kind of complete and that vehicle will never be seen or touched by Ford again, except in a, a pretty limited number of circumstances. So any way you look at it, there's a lot riding on these over the air updates for Ford in particular. There's that recurring revenue stream, there's kind of beating back Tesla, which is, is kind of nipping at everyone's heels and I think has all the, the major auto manufacturers scared. There's also a bit of a pride thing. You know, if you watch Ford's commercials or you know, particularly the US based automakers, they play on patriotism, they play on hard work, you know, they play on all these, these kind of bedrock values. Yes, some of that's kind of marketing BS, but I think to some extent, you know, having worked with some of these folks, they, they do believe that. And they're seeing this upstart take over some of that. So there's a lot, uh, lot riding on over the air. And interestingly, you know, I and, and I think a lot of other people thought where Ford would fall down was on the software side of things. You know, it's hard to be a software company if you're used to manufacturing. That's pretty common knowledge and, and something that's you know reported in the press a lot. To a lesser extent, I think it's really hard to be a software company and then transition to manufacturing a complex product like a vehicle. We saw a ton of that with Tesla with that whole uh, production hell thing. So, you know, it's, it's hard to, to kind of do that migration from one segment to the other. And, you know, Ford seems to have pulled that off reasonably well based on the fact that there are vehicles with Blue Cruise rolling out right now. By all accounts, it works reasonably well. You know, it's on par more or less from what I've heard and what I've seen with Tesla's autopilot. You know, not their full self-driving thing, which, which has its own set of quirks, but with a system that lets you drive hands-free on the highway. But what they haven't been able to pull off for whatever reason is deploying that software over the air. And there's several components to this. And I think there's, it's something that seems incredibly simple. And maybe I wonder if Ford took that for granted. You know, when you kind of think about it, it's like, hey, we throw a, essentially a modem in our car. We put a cellular radio in there. You have, you know, software that you distribute through some sort of software distribution platform. Again, nothing particularly new there. That's something that, uh, that's been done at scale before. And then you got a bunch of computers in your car. You send the new software to all those puppies and you know, off you go and, and Bob's your uncle and you've got over the air updates. Where I think maybe they, uh, they struggled and again, 100% speculation on my part is most modern auto manufacturers and I've heard from people in the industry that Ford kind of typifies this and, and maybe exemplifies this, don't make a lot of their components in house. So at least in the F-150, 
you know, some other company makes the transmission, uh, you know, one company may make the screen and kind of the entertainment system. Another company may make the seats. Um, you know, they might even have a, a completely separate company that gets the metal and stamps out the, the frame for the vehicle. And at the end of the day, the Fords of the world are almost more assemblers of a bunch of components that they bought from someone than the actual builders and manufacturers of these vehicles. So when you have that kind of complexity, you maybe have you know, 10, 50, 100 different companies producing stuff for your car that has a microcontroller in it, all of those microcontrollers running software, all of them having to talk to each other, and an over-the-air update process that depends on updating, you know, a half dozen of those in one fell swoop, rolling back anything that fails, you know, making sure everything goes successfully. Otherwise, you know, the this bedrock customer that Ford prides itself on uh, making vehicles for goes out to start his or her truck in the morning to get to work and the thing says uh, you know the equivalent of the blue screen of death from windows or, or won't run or whatnot that's bad news so i think they dramatically underestimate the difficulties in the over the air piece you know, they nailed or at least seemingly nailed the software piece you know they nailed the historical quality of the ford product i think it's you know an excellent product inside as i've talked about in some of my previous videos but that over the air piece seems to really be challenging them and to give you some examples from my own ownership of the vehicle, you know, I've had one over-the-air update come through successfully. It added a feature called Secure Alert, which basically will you know, beep, beep my phone if somebody opens the doors outside of, of certain hours. So you know, I have it set at like 3 in the morning. If a door opens, I get a little message on my phone saying passenger door opened. You know, so cool. Nice, uh, nice new feature that did live up to the promise of net new features coming in for no additional costs after I'd purchased the vehicle. So... Hooray for Ford. You know, it seems pretty obvious that that was a, a relatively low risk test that they did to test out all this stuff. The next update that's failed once for me promises to add a little bit more functionality. So it's supposed to add some CarPlay features to the dash where I can see directions in the dash instead of just on the nav unit. I think there maybe are some other miscellaneous features in there. there there's rumored to be a feature that'll let you actually use the cameras while you're driving which is relevant so you can see your bed, um, which would be a nice feature to have. Right now, all those cameras will shut off when you go over like six miles an hour, so makes them less helpful if you're off-road or in a parking lot or want to see what's what's going on in your bed while you're hauling stuff. But the big kahuna is obviously that Blue Cruise update. So I think they're trying to you know do a little update, see how that works. In my case, it went okay. That next you know maybe small to medium-ish size over-the-air update failed once for me. Um, it hasn't attempted it again, which kind of leads me to my next complaint. You know, there is a screen in the nav unit that lets you set when these automatic updates occur. It theoretically lets you check for updates on an ad hoc basis. As best I can tell, that whole screen is basically just a pile of BS. You know, I set it to update on a certain day of the week when I got the error message that, uh, that my that the last update didn't actually go through. It wasn't on my, my scheduled update time. Whenever you tap the little button that says check for updates now, it invariably says you're up to date. And I know for a fact that there's new software out there since I've you know been on all the forums and people have successfully gotten that CarPlay update. And obviously people have, uh, have Blue Cruise, so there is newer software out there. You know, I've tried adjusting the date to, you know, the day after it failed. I, I think I had my update set to Wednesday. I moved it to Thursday, moved it to Friday. No updates happened, so. You know, that screen's utterly useless. So I think, again, speculation on my part, but based on what I'm seeing and what I've heard from others, I would guess that Ford is kind of running these updates in full manual mode right now. You know, they're able to send updates to individual batches of vehicles. They're, you know, doing 100, dozen, whatever at a time, seeing how many fail. And so far, the failure percentage has been high enough that they don't want to send out Blue Cruise because I would assume Blue Cruise impacts some more critical modules of the vehicle and potentially if some of those uh, those elements of the update fail, leaves your vehicle non-functional. That's my complaint. You know, that's some inside baseball about why this, I think, is more important than just, you know, people running around saying, you know, when I want Blue Cruise, I was told I'd get it in October. Now I'm going to wait till best case January, you know, worst case May, June of next year, which would, would be a big bummer since, uh, at least in my case, I do a lot of long distance driving. But, you know, Ford can't fix this OTA update thing. I think that's a, that's a big risk. You know, they have put out there and, and publicized and made a big deal out of the fact that they're going to compete with Tesla on improving these vehicles as they age instead of just selling you this static product that never gets better. That's, you know, what you roll off with a lot of, 
what you roll off the lot with is kind of what you what you're stuck with versus Tesla that really redefined and reset that expectation around vehicles that you know what I roll off the lot with will actually get better it'll be improved and that'll happen on a regular basis as an individual consumer yeah I'm kind of pissed quite frankly that I'm going to wait for Blue Cruise not the end of the world um, you know I'll be more my frustration will probably start to bell curve a little bit more exponentially if it looks like it's going to be June instead of, you know, January, Feb. From a, you know, follower of the auto industry, I'd like to see Tesla get more competition. You know, I'd like to see a mass market auto OEM like a Ford instead of kind of these, these more niche and, you know, more expensive players be able to pull off OTA, be able to do it well. And, you know, frankly, I'm, I'm okay paying Ford for some of these improvements but they got to figure out how to actually execute it. And they've got to figure out how to do it reliably, do it consistently and not tell me that, you know, Hey, you can pay a thousand bucks for a feature that will get you in 60 days. And then that 60 days turns into potentially six months. So hopefully that helped you. If you're thinking about the F-150, if you've got one and you're wondering, you know, WTF on the OTA, which is a lot of TLAs, keep keeping on. Hopefully you are enjoying your F-150. Hopefully you're, if you're one of those lucky ones that has a newer one and enjoying Blue Cruise, you know, put something in the comments. Let me know how that's working out for you. I hope to be Blue Cruising along one of these days in the near future. And until then, be safe, be well, and I'll see you out there on the road. Peace. Ever wonder why every talking head on YouTube asks you to hit the like and subscribe button at the end of their video? You are right, because we're living in a computer simulation. And our benevolent robotic overlords get just a little bit of energy every time you hit that like. So, do me, the rest of civilization, and our benevolent robotic overlords a favor. Match that subscribe, be kind to each other, keep living your simulated dreams.